I bought the base M2 MacBook Air to prove that it is not slow. Am I right or was I wrong? Watch till the end to find out, because in this video I will tell you what I have found and finally answer the question whether you should buy the base M2 MacBook Air. The M2 MacBook Air has been around for over half a year, but the debate is still very much heated. Thousands of people are on the crossroads. On one hand, for $1200 you're getting a capable machine, but on the other hand, a very flawed one. I think it's time for us to end this debate once and for all. I don't want to go all ballistic on this thing. All I want is to share my opinion with you, without all that carelessness of other reviewers who actually don't care about your purchases. I want you to know exactly what you're gonna get for $1200. I think it's safe to start with the good things that you get. First, the design. You can hate me all you want, but I actually think this new boxy design is better than the wedge shape. Yeah, I said it. Wedge shaped is old fashioned and outdated, despite still being pretty sleek. However, I can say that it gives the right vibe that you want. Wedge shaped MacBooks are elegant and light. They aren't made for work or any heavy lifting. This new design, however, is very well suited for work. It says business, it encourages you to do things, to create. At least that's what I feel. A centimeter thick piece of metal the size of a piece of paper looks and feels really nice and robust. I've got mine in space grey and I can't say that I love this color. The second good thing you get is the display. It's reasonably big with pretty thin edges. Not like in MacBook Pros, but still. It's a liquid retina display, which basically means it's a high quality IPS. I've had no issues with it. At all. It's very bright, crisp and displays a ton of colors. This display is great for watching movies and videos, despite being a little too small for that. Plus, the blacks are more grey than black, but that's inevitable for such screens. As for the speakers, good. Plenty of volume for movies or videos, the sound can even fill a small room. I'm not an audiophile, so don't expect any crazy diagrams from me. It's a set of good sounding speakers, nothing more, nothing less. Plus, I personally rarely use my laptop without headphones. One last little thing that can matter to you, the webcam and the microphone. This is a 1080p webcam with a pretty wide angle which should be enough for any video call. It's not perfect by any means, but it is much better than you would expect. But I don't want to bore you to death, so let's move on to something more juicy, the performance. If you open YouTube and search for the M2 MacBook Air review, here's what you'll hear. This is gonna be slow. It gets so hot. A significantly slower. But are they totally honest? How does it really perform? Let's start from the basics. The base M2 MacBook Air is equipped with an 8-core M2 chip, 8 gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigs of moderately fast SSD. It is plenty for macOS. Animations are fast, the interface is responsive, and the apps themselves are almost always snappy. However, there was one small issue I noticed in the first couple of days, and it has to do with Pages. Pages as a text editor is weird, but it's Apple made. So I expected at least a perfect optimization for this map. Imagine my surprise when changing a font in a document gave me the first loading beach ball. It's like text editing in Apple's own app and it lags. Then I moved to Google Docs in Safari and for some time seemed to have no problems. Days went by and it was working flawlessly. Right until the moment the number of tabs grew over 15. Then it had to reload tabs. I don't know whether it's a problem with MacBook or with these Google-made websites, because with other websites I saw no problems. So please, don't quote me on that. Then I thought, how about something heavier? I fired up Photoshop and started editing. Hours went by and everything was fast and responsive with no hiccups. As long as you're staying within the limits of an average user's use cases, everything works perfectly fine. What about video editing? I tried DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut. DaVinci took a really long time to open, but once it was working, everything was totally fine. Effects, color correction, everything fast and responsive. Only the exporting took quite some time. But let's cut this thing some slack. It's a fanless laptop. With Final Cut things are even better. It launches super fast and handles big projects like a champ. Effects, transitions, everything works great, even without proxies. With proxies it runs even better. 
The only thing that bothered me was the export time. Export time is not great and it gets longer as the chip heats up. But to me it's not an issue since my workflow isn't that crazy. So I can spare a few minutes here and there. Does it get uncomfortably hot as in reviews? No. Does it get super slow? Also no. Does it get a bit slower as the load increases? Yeah. Was I wrong for buying it? No, of course not. It's an almost perfect laptop for students, teachers or casual users. You can easily edit a few videos or photos on it. It will run spreadsheets rather well and overall be a great companion for someone who doesn't need much. The M2 MacBook Air is exactly what it's marketed at. An entry-level MacBook for basic users, period. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.